And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Panphagia, which was a request from Crow via our Patreon and Discord. So thanks. It was a sauropodomorph that lived in the late Triassic in what is now San Juan Province, Argentina. And it looked like other early dinosaurs. It had the long tail, the somewhat long neck, long arms, and it walked on two legs. The fossils found had similar features of the sauropodomorphs Saturnalia, which we covered in episode 369, and Eoraptor, which we covered in episode 60. Now, the size and proportions were similar to Eoraptor, though Panphagia is slightly larger with relatively shorter hind limbs compared to Eoraptor. The front of the skull between the eyes was narrow, too, like Eoraptor, and unlike Herrerasaurus, which is another early dinosaur. The lower jaw was proportionally more slender, also compared to Eoraptor. And it had, Panphagia had a proportionally short nasal. The holotype of Panphagia is about 4.3 feet or 1.3 meters long. Oh, it's little. Yeah. Oh, early dinosaurs, they tend to be smaller. <laughs> Even for a sauropodomorph. <laughs> yeah. It's a little tiny thing. <laughs> and the holotype includes parts of the skull, vertebrae, parts of the shoulder, parts of the pelvis, and hind limb bones. The bones were mostly disarticulated, except for 15 of the tail vertebrae, but all the bones were near each other and there were no duplicate bones, so it's likely they all came from the same individual. The limb bones and vertebrae had hollow shafts like Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus. These fossils were found in 2006 by Ricardo Martinez and then described in 2009 by Martinez and Oscar Alcobert. The type species is Panphagia protos. The genus name means all to eat in Greek, and it refers to this dinosaur probably being an omnivore, quote, which appears to be transitional between carnivory and herbivory. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, because we think all the earliest dinosaurs were carnivorous, but sauropods, obviously. They became the well-known herbivores. Yeah, maybe the best-known herbivorous dinosaurs. Yeah. Now, the species name Protos means the first, and that refers to its basal position in sauropodomorphs. Okay, so they do think it was a sauropodomorph and not a herrerasaurid. Yes. It lived around 231 million years ago. Ooh, yeah, that's old. Yeah, it's the most basal known sauropodomorph so far. And it had teeth that may mean it was an omnivore. The teeth in the back of the jaw were shorter than the teeth in the front, and they were leaf-shaped. And the teeth in the front were better for eating meat. Hmm. So this discovery really helped show how sauropods evolved, again, living so long ago. That was around early Carnian. And Panphagia helps show an earlier origin of sauropodomorphs during the Middle Triassic. Now, based on animals found in the formation where Panphagia was found, the Ischiagualasto formation from the Carnian, which had both Saurischians and Ornithischians. It had Ornithischians, huh? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we're always talking about how those are totally miss- missing for the fossil record they must be including some probable ornithischians in, I their, think so. in their list there are also theropods and sauropodomorphs from the saurischian side so based on that martinez and alcobert when they were talking about panphagia suggested that saurischia split into theropods and sauropodomorphs in a few million years because this was already on the sauropod lineage. Yes. Pretty close to that base of the Saurischian family tree. Yeah. And based on Panphagia and its relatives, Saurischian dinosaurs are thought to have started as small animals that could run. And eat meat. Yes. Now, Panphagia had features that made it clear it was a basal sauropodomorph, even though it is close to the common ancestor of theropods and sauropods. And You see these features in the teeth and jaws, as well as features in the vertebrae and the ankle bone and the leg bone lengths. Panphagia had a relatively long skull, which, quote, represents the primitive condition when compared with the reduced skull length in other sauropodomorphs, quote. Oh, yeah, they had little little heads (laughs) relative to their body size. But Panphagia had a relatively long one. Mm Mm-hmm. Hadn't shrunk yet. Yeah. In 2012, Martinez, Harrow, and Alpadetti described the partial brain case of Panphagia. The holotype of Panphagia was a subadult, and that's based on the lack of fusion in the brain case fossils. And the brain case had features that further linked Panphagia to sauropodomorphs and to it being one of the most basal sauropodomorphs, such as having a proportionally long frontal skull bone. That bone on the, well, it's the bone on the front of the skull. Panphagia lived alongside at least five other basal dinosaurs, including Eoraptor and Herrerasaurus, which makes sense then why you would keep comparing these dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Cool. That's a that's a really neat dinosaur, Panphagia. I like the name a lot mm-hmm. for an omnivore, and it's it's really cool that it it shows that sort of transition from carnivore to herbivore in yeah. sauropods. I feel like that's a dinosaur everyone should know about, and almost no one knows about. I didn't know about it until you just told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely an important one. Yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left.